Hello YouTube, thought I'd do a quick video. Some of you may be wondering what's the difference uh, using Zello in a gateway mode and using the DB9 connectors to hook up your radio or using Zello in the, in the standard way using the blue box to hook up to your radio. What's the pros and cons of each? Well, I'm hopefully going to explain this in a video, and this will help you kind of decide which way you want to go. Um, let's start with the gateway. The one advantage is when you go to Tools and Options, and you select, you can tell it what pin you want to use, what state, high or low. Same with the Receive. You can tell it what pin. Do you want that pin to be high or low? That's that's really nice to be able to do that because every radio is a little different. So that's nice having that feature to be able to do that. So that's one plus thing. Um, the other plus thing is uh, it's cheaper and for parts to to build it in a gateway mode, and for parts you can use a USB sound card dongle or you can use your built-in sound card if your computer's got the headphone jacks like I talked about in my in my other videos but sometimes it's best just to buy this because you know this is three dollars and it's it's gonna work well um, you know maybe the the one in your computer may not as work as well but if you have issues with the sound then buy this for three dollars you can also if you're the t person that likes a solder you can buy the DB9 female end and it does you can buy ones that come with a hood so you can put it together or if you don't like the solder or can't they do sell a terminal block one that you can use screws and you put the wire in here and then you just tighten down the screws this does come with a cover I just don't have the cover showing in the video now I'm going to show you since I showed you this now I can unplug this from my computer I'm going to unplug this COM port now it's going to say failed right here because I unplugged this but you're also going to need unless your computer is old enough to have this otherwise you're going to need a USB to DB9 adapter for your computer it plugs in the USB port works really well and these since this is male and then you just need the female ones to do your modifications um, obviously you're also going to need your jacks for your um, if you're going to use a, a uh, mobile radio you're going to need the 2.5 a millimeter and the 3.5 jacks for your sound you'll need I'll post a link to this cord remember I cut this cord in half so I'll post that link if you're gonna hook it to a mobile radio if you're not going to then you'll have to use the appropriate uh, plug for your radio whether it's an RJ 45 or, or whatnot so another advantage this does not seem to be as picky as in voltages as for the highs and lows. It, it's a little more forgiving. You don't really need a squelch line to use this method, um, which is nice because it can be difficult getting the squelch line that is needed for the blue box. I don't need a squelch line for this. Um, so that's kind of nice too. Uh, and it, like I said, it's cheaper. The only downside, now we're gonna, uh, downside that we're, uh, is when you exit Zello, depending on your radio, when you exit the Zello gateway, it will key up the radio. And there's a couple ways you can fix that. Either the one way is obviously go into radio settings and turn on the transmit timer function in the menu. You can turn that on. Uh, I think it's called TOT, so that if the radio's keyed up for a, a certain amount of time, it automatically unkeys it. So you can do that, or you can add a resistor, a pull-up resistor, to your 
to the to the circuit to tie it high. Um, I haven't had much luck with that. I haven't played with it, you know, as, you know, in depth. I did play it a little bit with the resistor, and I wasn't having much luck. When I did tie it high, it wouldn't let it go low when it needed to, with when it was in use. So probably be best to just activate your timeout timer on your radio. That would solve that problem. You're probably asking yourself, well, why do I need to worry about that? Well, if Zello crashes or the computer does a reboot or something remotely and it doesn't come back online, you don't want your radio keying up for hours and hours and hours. So that's why you want to set your TOT in your radio to avoid that problem. So that would solve that problem. Um, so not a real big um, downside, but it's still kind of a downside. Uh, that may be, and that, that and that only happens because my radio needs a low for it to transmit. So if yours is a high, you may not have that problem with your radio. But mine is a low, and when Zello exits, it automatically puts that pin on low when Zello is not running. That's why it does that. So, not a real big thing, but just to let you be aware of that. The other disadvantage with the gateway, let me get my little pin out, is that you can't access the channels that you have your repeater on very easily. As you can see, when it's in the gateway mode, this is the screen you get. You can add channels, but you can't see your list. So you have to exit gateway, go and change the settings, and then go back into uh, gateway. Um, not terrible, but it is kind of an inconvenience. Yes, when you get it set up, you probably won't be switching channels once you get everything all set up. But for the uh, purpose of easeability, that's not the easy. As in, you know, a couple clicks, you got to do a lot more. Um, that's only kind of a downside. At least I say it's a downside. Um, I do, you know, realize there is, you know, tools you can do a add channel, but you can't see the channels you already had added. At least I haven't found a way to do it. Maybe some out there does know that. And if they do, please make a comment in the video, uh, comment down below. But I haven't seen that, so that's kind of another downside. Um, yeah. That's really about it. Those two little things are kind of downside about doing the DB9 serial port, COM port way. The only two little downsides. Not not bad. Uh, plus sides, like I said, not as it's not as picky as what voltages it needs to make it work. So it seems, at least with the radio I'm using for these tests. So. There's that. Now, let's talk about the blue box. So let's go ahead and move all this off the screen here. The blue box is quite interesting. Um, let's exit this because we're not talking about this. Now we're talking about this. So let's sign in here quick. The blue box has its advantages and disadvantages like everything else. Um, Let's start with some of the advantages. One of the advantages is, as you can see, I get to have Zello in in its nor normal way. I call it the normal way. So you can see what channels you're, you're in here. You can see what channels you're in. So that's kind of nice to be able to do that. Um, so that's one advantage. The other advantage is if you have the radio where you can plug in the circuit board. There's another circuit board. I don't have that one, but there's two circuit boards. Um, so you got to make sure you get the right one. But it looks just like this, except for it has more. Uh, the, the black connector is bigger. But if you have the radio where you can just plug this in the back and not have to do any you know, soldering and, and figuring out the wires and all that stuff, then this is more of a plug-and-play unit for you. Um, this that's one advantage of this. You just plug this into this cable here and plug it into your radio and off you go. Do a couple settings and the way you go. So that's that's kind of a nice advantage, more plug and play in that sense. If you don't have 
the radio for this, then you can still do it uh, with making your own cable. You can do it the way, like I said in my video, by the S video uh, jack. And you can mount this in a metal box. Or if you want, you could probably cut the end off of this cable, cut it off, and then get to the wires and then make your own cable that way, or buy another cable like this. So that's the two ways you can do your own DIY uh, setup. Now, this does work on more than just Zello. Obviously, it uh, that's a, a, another plus. This will work on Zello, Echolink, All Star, uh, and a couple other uh, ones programs too. So that's 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 a plus. Um, the only downside, at least in my opinion, is I don't. When using it in Zello mode, I don't care for the squelch. I got to have a squelch line or COS line or another term for it is COR underscore DET, which must you know stand for detect. Um, either term you want to use, I, I kind of don't like that. It's kind of a pain to try to find that line. Now, maybe some radios are easier than others. That's very well possible, but I don't like that. And I notice it's more pickier on the voltage that is needed for that line. I've been playing with it before I got it to work with my Balfang, and I tried many different ways of getting it to work without taking the radio apart, and I could not get it to work. I could manually trick it by activating a line with a separate power supply, then it worked great. But that defeats the whole purpose to be, you know, you don't want to be you know, next to the computer to, to do that. So that's how I know it's kind of kind of picky in what it needs for voltage. Um, that's one minus thing I, I, I don't like about the blue box, to be honest with you. Uh, other than that, it's, you know, it's pretty good. I've I've used it the um, on my radio, like I did the video on. Seems to work well. Uh, if I, you know, in my opinion, I think for a DIY person who wants to solder and and do different radios and have more adjustability is the word I'm trying to say. I think the gateway mode, which is the COM port way with the USB sound card, I think this is more adjustable because you can go into the Zello and tell it, yeah, I want pin, I want that pin to be high. No, I need that pin to be low. You can tell it that. I can't tell that with this blue box. I have no control over that. If it wants a high, it's got to be a high. There's That's it. It's got to be a high. So I, I kind of don't like that, to be honest with you. Um, uh, what else? I think that's pretty much about it. Um, like I said, they all have pluses and minuses. Uh, you know, the blue box is fairly simple to set up. You know, like I said, when you use the USB and the USB detect, the first two plugs on here, Windows will detect it, no problem. If you need to use the serial port, which I think is used for the Echo Link and the All Star, I believe, you have to install a, a driver. Like I said, I'll post the links. I'll post a lot of links down in the description below. The manual to this, uh, the parts to the DB9 way. The cable. Oh, and again, on this one too, you also, if you're going to use a handheld on this, you're also also going to need to, to use the same type of cables to hook to your handheld. So you'll have to modify it like I did in that one video where I could plug this in. So you'll have to modify that if you're going to use a handheld. If you're going to use a mobile radio, then you're going to have to figure out your pinout on your RJ45 connector, and you may be able to adapt that. The only thing, again, it's the squelch line. Uh, I don't know if there's going to be a squelch line on that RJ45 plug. You may have to get it from the uh, inside the radio. That's the um, 
that's kind of the, the the downside and the other downside to this if if you you know want to really be technical some radios or repeaters their squelch line or their busy line is a low well that ain't going to work on this box this box needs a high so to fix that i would have to modify the other radio either with a hex inverter uh, a chip that takes a low and turns into a high or a transistor uh, switching uh, circuit would be another way to to do that but you're gonna have to build it my point is you're gonna have to build another circuit if your radio only does a low on the squelch slash busy whatever term you want to call it and the one ray or the one thing that comes to mind that does that is of course the Redivis RT97 repeater that does a low um, even the model the R the RT 97 s that comes with the serial port if I remember correctly that particular low pin is a low so you're gonna have to build a separate little circuit to be able to convert that low into a high to activate this box if you're gonna use it for Zello so not a big deal just a little more steps you got to jump through and um, I will be uh, working on that uh, if I can get my repeater back together I will be uh, possibly doing a video on that how to get this box to work with the with a modified Redivis RT 97 repeater so at any rate, that's the only downside I would have to say is that squelch line. I, I'm just not a fan of it. Um, when you get the right line, it, it works great. But getting to that line can be a challenge. So, at any rate, I hope this video helps answer some questions. I will post all the links down below. If you have any questions or comments, please post them down below. And please subscribe. And thank you and have a good day.